Hello. Thought I'd mention something about relays. Now, in one of my previous posts, I mentioned that I was going to move that bank there of relays with a and put a panel on there to uh, make them more shock resistant. Decided against that. Too much mucking around. And these things have got a bit of absorption, anyways. But what I did decide to do was replace the existing relays that I had in there, which worked perfectly, mind you. But where is it? these are the ones I used before, 40 amperes. Worked perfectly. Five pin crossover. All right. You can see a little bit of that bond and sealer there that I've used. That's just to stop them from uh, bouncing out during and vibrations on, on bumpy and uh, corrugated roads. Now, what I'm replacing them with is these ones. Now, there's two reasons for this. One, it has the clear plastic and it kind of looks cool. Uh, well, if you think a cool one, then maybe three reasons, because that's one of them. The other one is there, you can see that little green LED. Makes it a lot easier to tell that whether or not, if you've got a problem with your electrical circuit, whether or not there's um, power getting to your relay, which is half your battle, figuring out where the power is, if it's got power or not. Well, that tells you straight away, yep, I've got power, what's going on. The other thing is you can see inside, so you can actually physically see the relay working when you uh, activate the circuit. Now, if you can see that it's working, it's getting power, then you can look elsewhere. So at a glance, you've probably saved yourself half an hour doing a bit of searching, testing wires, and God knows what else. The other thing is too, particularly in four-wheel driving and off-roading and that, um, is that because it is clear, you can clearly see whether or not it's filled up full of crap and mo dust and moisture and anything else that might be growing inside it. So you can quickly see, yep, it's full of stuff, pull him out, replace him. So that's why I've gone to those, those, one, those ones there, instead of these ones here. Both 40 amp crossovers, both 12 volt. But, yeah. Now a good trick, I'll share this with you, I'll just switch hands because I'm right handed, now, um, is, uh, where are you, get in here, right. is this thing, it took me a while to pick it up, just a little syringe, full of grease, beautiful. Now, something out of medic medicine cabinet, like an old, comes with your baby's Panadol, that sort of thing. If you haven't got one, just go to the chemist and ask for a syringe without a needle. Um, dispensing syringe. You can get them in varying sizes. I think this one was um, 5 mil, something like that. Now, the idea keeps water away and you use a high melting point type grease, that's water repellent, and all your connections, give them, I do this without squirting it everywhere, a dose of grease. Uh, a bit hard to do and just push it in there. Just like that. Yes, it'll squish out, but when you put your relay in, now you can see I've cleaned up all of these, and some of these are used as a crossover relay, some are used as a regular relay. And these holders make life a lot easier. Just put the connectors in where you need them to be, and then if you ever have a problem with a relay, you just pull the relay and your connector stays in place. And the worst case scenario too, because since you've got a holder, 
it's very easy for you to make a loop wire and just and just uh, bridge the wire if you don't have a spare relay to throw in there to get you out of trouble. Now I've got so many relays because I have a secondary circuits within the car which I'll show at a later date once I finish the main panel for my four-wheel drive running lights alarm system um, ground lights off-road lights driving lights all of which when I switch the ignition off switch off right that's the grease sorted now excuse my hand what I want to do now you can see here I've not used a great deal doesn't take much um, yeah take much at all and what we want to do now is wipe some of that excess off we don't want it between there and there's a reason for that too now our bond and sealer we don't need much as I've made the mistake once before of putting way too much on just need enough to if I can get it to come out. It always takes forever with a new tube. because you don't want to get grease where you want to put your bond and sealer. Put a dub in, it in the middle. And that's all it's going to take. on there to give it a good bonding. You don't need too much because it will squash out. Yep. 
in. Correct Y, back to the back. Get in there. Now the correct. Oops, um, wrong Y. Makes sense, doesn't it? There we go. Down. And what you've done is made it easy enough to get them out if there was a problem. But you've now put enough grease on there which is more than a sufficient contact to cut through the grease and off and work. But also you've waterproofed it and you've stopped it from vibrating out and bouncing out. It does look like there's a lot of relays here, but relays are better. And I always go 40 amp just in case some of the relays can handle more than what I'm drawing. Most of the time I'm only drawing 10 amps, but given that you've got a good robust 40 amper in there, you know it's going to last and keep you survive anything that you can throw at it. All in there. Wipe that grease off. Bit of a mess up there. There we go. And you notice too that I've used stainless steel screws again to hold it all in place. So there we go. On this side that you see. You can see it nice and neat. You can see them all and read them all and yep, all look good. Cool. Done.